What's up, Hyperfast Nation? On this episode of the show, we've got an amazing guest. He started a new brokerage in the middle of the pandemic and has sold hundreds of millions of dollars already. He's the first person to bring the agency to Toronto. Welcome to the show, Peter Torkin. All right. Welcome to the show today, Peter. How are you doing? I'm fantastic. Thank you so much, Dan, for having me. It's great to be here. All right. Well, I'm excited to have uh, another another husband, wife, team uh, leader on the show. You know, just similar to, to Carrie and myself. Uh, Peter, you you uh, run a big brokerage with your wife, correct? We do. We do. We started uh, our own brokerage, the agency, from about a year ago, and we, we just actually celebrated our first year in the middle of pandemic, my friend, we opened up. So, so not a lot of businesses start ground up in the middle of pandemic, but we did. And it's been just absolutely phenomenal. Uh, I, I think you are familiar with the brand, the agency. So we brought that for California, and it's just been absolutely tremendous success for and you guys just so people know you were the first to, to bring that brand to canada correct mm. i was the first to bring it to toronto to, to toronto canada, okay correct. yeah so Can canada um uh, my uh, close friend of mine in vancouver brought it in but in toronto we me and my wife we are the first pioneer to establish this brokerage yes that's correct okay well why don't you tell people, give them a little background before you, you know, made the decision to, to bring the agency to Toronto. What were you guys doing and, and what kind of led up to that? Why did you decide, you know, we're going to bring this? this, uh, so, I, I was, I, the, the, so I was, I was, I've been in the business for over 15 years. So um, selling luxury real estate, especially in Toronto, which is the most affluent neighborhood called Brighter Path and York Mills. In Toronto, which Drake lives right now, by example, I pass it by his house every day. So, uh, so it's, I've been selling that neighborhood for a long, long time. And um, what gravitated us towards uh, bringing this brand to Toronto was uh, the agency, if anybody's familiar with it, it's an extremely luxury brand uh, based in California. Um, and the culture that they represent, it's absolutely phenomenal. I'm starting from our CEO and founder, Mauricio Yumansky, which is a celebrated himself, uh, married to Kyle Richards, which is real housewife of Beverly Hills and so on and so forth. But that's not the reason that we gravitate towards it. Uh, we flew over back in 2019, me and my wife. And since we do sell luxury real estate in Toronto, we wanted something, something different, something that complements uh, Toronto market, something that hasn't been done before, something outside of the box. And that's what agency offered to us. Uh, and the marketing is staggering. It's like, oof, you haven't seen such a marketing whatsoever. Um, they sell hundred million dollar homes. They sell Playboy Mansion. So, so it, that marketing translated and the culture that we fell in love with for us in Toronto so me and my wife, we decided to uh, the, uh, bring the franchisee and it's just been absolutely explosive. Uh, since our inception in the middle of COVID, we've done over $130 million in transaction and uh, close to $100 million, just a quarter that we, started, that we just passed. So uh, market is on fire. And how many, how many agents did it, did it take to get to that level? I mean, that's, that's a lot of deals. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, we started only with me and my wife. When we came in, we had absolutely no team. We needed to establish a team. So since uh, September and October of last year, we started selecting and handpicking who do we want to work with because the culture of the agency is very different. It's, it's a culture of collaboration. It's not a culture of competition. 
So that's what we want to translate into our own team environment in Toronto. So we started selecting a handful of people. Right now, currently, you're sitting about 20 to 22 agents, a uh, very small group of individuals that are extremely, extremely well-trained, well-polished, they understand the market, and they're go-getters. That's, that's what we want. They, want. they have that desire to become successful, and they need the tools in which we provide it, and they're just rocking it. How how are you getting the business for them? Are you know are you are you generating a lot of leads for them? Are they doing it themselves? Is it a mix? Uh, so it's it's a mix. Uh, first of all, everybody as a realtor, you know, they're independent brokers, so they run their own show. But what we provide them is is the service and the back end and all the material they need to go on and become successful at their their day to day business. Uh, I think you know that listing agents last in our business and and the goal is to become a successful listing agent. And I've been doing long enough, and so have you, that you understand it's a 90-10 rule. 10% of the top realtors make 90% of the money, you know. So and those are all listing agents. So I, start, I, I developed this system of habit 15 years ago and I hacked it into my brain and I'm transferring the same thing to my agents. I'm telling them guys, you need to become listing agents. You wanna last in this business, that's what you have to become. So they're getting them, the leads they're generating themselves. Social media, especially in COVID has been huge as you can imagine. Um, and personally, I do share listings with them uh, when it comes to a more expensive uh, properties because I do bring juniors on. And not that they're juniors, they're, I need help to service the listing and do the showings because we're always present and all of that. And I do share that with my team, but they generate a bulk of business for themselves as well. And are they, are they struggling to get listings? Do you guys have the same kind of problems in the US market where inventory is just so low and you know how and, and if, if you are getting the listings, how are you doing it in the low inventory environment? So uh, uh, it, it is low inventory market as you can imagine, right? And uh, the people that are actually selling, they have to sell and there's tons of demand out there. Uh, Toronto market is a very multicultural market, especially the, the, the feeder market comes from a lot of immigration that they purchase inside Toronto, especially it's, it's one of the top uh, financial, it's, a, it's the number one financial district of Canada. So it's like New York, mini New York, put it this way. So yeah, so li li getting listings, um, it is a challenge because of COVID, we cannot see feet face to face a lot of times. Uh, but uh, because of, of uh, the agents that I have and our own background, uh, we do have a lot of listings and a lot of referrals, a lot of, a lot of past clientele that it, they constantly work with us. Um, and as I said to you, we, are, uh, we work in a very small niche. I'm talking about only 5,000 homes. So I'm not talking about 50,000 homes. Market and that 5,000 homes usually transacts between a billion dollars plus a year. Just there's, there's only five 5,000? The one that me and my work work. The, okay. the area that we work and concentrate, right? So is this, is this like a higher end part of? Correct. Uh, okay. That's correct. So that's only 5,000 homes that we concentrate on. And the transaction is over a billion dollars a year, every year. It's been like that for past 11 do you, years. Do you do business outside of that or, or is it kind of as it comes in or, or do you refer them out or? I do. So, so yeah. if, if there is listings to be had, let's say 20 minutes or 30 minutes outside of the area that I work, I usually go there, but I do put my other team members and other agents of my office to help me out servicing the property and the client will get the absolute top-notch Ritz Carlton white glove service from the agency family in Toronto. So it's a teamwork, it's all of us. So in terms of struggling, we are not. <laughs> I'll tell you right now, we have enough inventory. We got about $115 million worth of listing book. So, and we just keep on adding to it. And um, Toronto, unfortunately, we went, we're, we're a little bit different from you guys. We're in lockdown right now. So we cannot, uh, the government puts really, uh, you know, it's tough. It's they put restrictions constantly, right? They go up and up, they, they, they close down. So getting into people's home is going to be a little bit of a challenge because of that lockdown. But uh, this lockdown would be over by end of this month and we're going to be 
business as usual. So it shouldn't be an issue. Hopefully, yeah, hope, hopefully we're <laughs> back well, to normal soon. I know. How, how, how has the, you know, changes been with the pandemic? You know, you started in the middle of it, but what did, what did you, what did you have to do differently to, to overcome the, the different challenges with the lockdowns and restrictions? So uh, I got to tell you something. I'm, I'm one of those guys, especially me and my wife, we're both uh, type of people that see the glass half full all the time. Okay. So, uh, you know, any sort of pandemic, any sort of uh, economy that hurts or goes downfall or, or bubble or whatever it is, there will be people that thrive in every economy or every situation. So we usually tend to look at the glass half full. So this pandemic has been an absolute blessing for us, <laughs> believe it or not. That's what I look at it. I say it was an absolute blessing for us. It gave us the leg and the momentum that we were we wanted for us to create this brokerage and build this baby up from ground up. And it's a baby. You got to raise it like a baby. And, and that's what we've been doing. And, and it's been amazing. So for us, just to answer your question, hasn't make a bit of a difference if anything actually prepared off for us to go push forward and fight harder and get at the goals that we wanted to get to. That's all. Awesome. Well, it's, it's always nice to see people that, you know, can, can take uh, what might be a tough situation or a challenge or, or just something different. Right. And then, and then not, not freak out and, 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 you know, pivot, not pause and, and adapt and, and overcome. Uh, what do you, what do you think's in store? Uh, you know, looking ahead to the, you know, the rest of this year, next year, do you think this inventory problem is going to persist? Um, you know, what, what are you going to, what are you maybe doing differently, you know, looking ahead that maybe you weren't thinking about a year ago? So I, 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 I do believe this is the world as it, that I've seen in the market. I think, I don't know if you have gone to this new app called Clubhouse, for example, right? If you drop into different conversation with, with different agents around the world, um, social media has been tremendous help in, in the technology wise, right? In, in this pandemic, for example. So, um, and, and you, you get to get a lot of information from everywhere and, and, and analyze to see what is going to be in the future because history will always repeat itself in my opinion. So right now, uh, I do believe the inventory will be low for this year, for sure. So it's not gonna be my issue, it's gonna be all of us issue. It's going to be the whole worldwide issue of people are not feeling comfortable allowing people to come to their houses. So you got to think a little bit outside of the box. How do we promote properties that if they won't be, especially in the higher end market, there were people want to see the property. You know, you know, we know a $10 million deal will not happen. For example, if the guy doesn't look at the property, right? So, um, I do see a, a shortage of inventory going around for everyone. Uh, I can only speak from our Toronto market, and I do think that would be the case. Uh, how to overcome it, I think the social media will play a big role going forward, regardless of any business type that we want to have, or pandemic or not. Uh, I think it will play a huge role for all of our businesses because websites, in my opinion, are becoming obsolete. Uh, nobody's looking at websites anymore. Uh, your social media, uh, especially Instagram, is your uh, new business card or new website or your channel that you can put your promotions on your business or whatever sort of business you're doing out to the world for people to see and purchase. I've done humongous amount of deals from my social media alone. So, and what uh, what social media do you think is the most important right now or, or might be in the you know next year or so 
I, I strongly believe in Instagram. I've been on it since uh, 2012, and I've built quite a bit of audience for myself. Um, and I've done, I think, about over 50, 60 million dollars in transactions just from my Instagram alone. Uh, so it's a strategy. Wow, that's a lot. <laughs> a lot. That is a lot. Uh, it's a very, it's a big strategy number, and it opened our eyes, me and my wife, when we did a four million dollar deal just from Instagram five, six years ago. And he was like, whoa, wait a second, where did this come from? And so so a client reached out, saw us on Instagram. I think back then we were at 50,000 followers. And, and she, she, she said, I want to sell my house and I, I need somebody that luxury understands outside of the box. My previous agent cannot sell it. Um, so we went there, we sold it within 30 days and they were static. Uh, so that opened up our eyes that said, holy moly, this is the new channel of reaching out and the reach is massive. You're on Instagram yourself, you understand the logic. So, but one thing led to another because uh, Toronto, it's it's a little bit behind North America, you know, United States, for example, right, or Canada. So they're a little bit uh, in terms of catching up. So I saw that. So uh, to answer your question, Instagram is number one. Now I've dabbled in uh, TikTok, for example, um, I got about 31,000 followers. I don't know how the hell I got 31,000 followers, but <laughs> which, is, which is funny to me. But, but uh, nevertheless, the first call came from TikTok. I had somebody reached out to me and said, look, we want to sell a $4 million house and we're having trouble selling it. Same scenario had happened before, five years ago. So it actually works. So we, me and my wife, we went to that listing appointment and, and look at it. So social media has become in, humongous so instagram tiktok i would say if you could come up with content and and video which is raw and clubhouse has been amazing uh, I've, I've been on clubhouse dabbling with that too with my friends with luxury listings and all of that so definitely instagram has a lot more room to grow in my opinion facebook not so much yeah i i tend to agree with you i was i i've, I've been really focused on tiktok lately and um and, and that's that's been kind of amazing to see the type of engagement you can get organically that you can't on other platforms. Clubhouse, I was I was on it early, you know, for a few weeks, and I, th I think it's okay for networking with other professionals and learning, but um, it seems to have dropped off rapidly. I saw I actually saw this tweet yesterday on their the amount of downloads they have, and it. They had two and a half million in, in January, nine and a half million in February. And, and then now they're down April, they only had like uh, 900,000. Yeah. So it's, it so, seems, it seems to have kind of, <laughs> I don't know if it peaked or more, I don't know. They're, they're struggling to expand, uh, but I think the up platform with it. needs a little bit of tweaking. When uh, the, the, at the beginning, I went on it quickly, gained some momentum. Uh, close friends of mine uh, on luxury listing Instagram page account, which is over 2.2 million followers. Uh, they're you know, seen as a close friend, the owners of that page. So if they started the clubhouse as well. So I, I saw the momentum of gaining that for people to engage with each other. So how to monetize it is very difficult because there's two different aspects. Going over there and networking and saying, hello, how are you? Sharing ideas is fantastic. There's nothing wrong with that. Um, but monetization of, of something, especially on social media, it's different concept. Like how to monetize from Instagram is it's, you could monetize it today, but, but Clubhouse, I haven't seen that yet. But to, to your point, you're right. Maybe that's the problem that's dropping off because people don't understand how to monetize it, to go to different roles. How do, how do you promote your services for people to connect with each other, right? To purchase and, 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 and try to uh, do some sort of transaction with each other. So that's to be seen. So hopefully that app will pick up, but it's great networking. I, I totally agree with that. Yeah, I, I, I kind of think they need to make it archivable because it's if you think about it from a content creator standpoint, like it, it, would, it would take a lot of your time to get on there for an hour and, and you know put out a good show and then then it's gone yeah that's true so i think i think if it was archivable that would make it potentially better and then, and then i think i think they need it to be more searchable like it's 
you know, I can kind of go on there and connect with people, but I don't, I don't know if it's as good as the other platforms searching on a topic. Look, at it, it's at um, its infancy right now, right? So I, I do believe they will come up with more ideas on how to have people to reach out or archive or should link it to a podcast, for example, or, or things like that. I think it's at the beginning of stage of it. But I do believe there will be a time that will be monetizable. Um, I was in one of the rooms and uh, uh, one of the agents in Vancouver uh, connected with somebody else and they did about a 30 something million dollar deal. It was mind blowing. <laughs> to me. So uh, well, for, for something to, like that to come from Clubhouse. So I do believe it will come to a point and becomes to fruition. But when that would be, I don't know. So. I'm I'm old school. What what you don't need a you don't need an ad if you have, you don't have a headache. So so if Instagram is working, by example, it, it I just stick to what I do best, and I and and I just have to you know repeat myself and just keep on going, right? So um, we'll see. It's time tells what would be coming out of Clubhouse, but Instagram I think still the number one go to app and. Uh, in terms of con videos and pictures and contents and relationships and stuff like that to, to create something out of it. Yeah, and I, I think it's possible too, another possibility, who knows, is that Clubhouse is the precursor to something even greater that, that kind of builds on what it did. So maybe Clubhouse is the my, what, you know, what MySpace was to Facebook or, or that Vine was to TikTok or, you know, maybe something better that kind of takes what it did and, and improves on it comes out. So def, def, definitely worth getting on and, and you know, dabbling with. Um, but, I, but I think your focus should be on either Instagram or TikTok or, or something else. I totally agree. I totally agree. I totally agree. I think there might be a giant coming in and buying it out and improving upon it, like much like Facebook buying Instagram way back when, right? So uh, it could happen, but there is a potential to it. It's just how, how, how do we as, as brokerages, as real estate agents, as, as, as somebody that is constantly is client service based, how do we monetize that, right? So it becomes a little bit difficult. We could go different rooms and different rooms and, and have conversation and ask questions, perhaps that leads to something. Um, but again, it's at, right at the beginning. So um, you just have to go along with the road, see where it takes us, I guess. <laughs> what, uh, what do you teach the agents you know, at, your, at your brokerage when it comes to social media? Are you giving them training and, and regular you know, updates kind of on what you're doing on social to, to try to get them to you know, get really good at it and generate their own business from, from those platforms as well? Absolutely. So I do. So not only for my own team in Toronto, I've done uh, webinars for our entire agency brokerage, which is we have over 700 agents right now, 39 offices, and I've done shows how to improve your social media. I don't know if I, I just followed you as well, actually. I've, uh, I got about 164,000 followers, a little over 160. So I, I, tried it all and stood the in algorithm. I know how to work with it, how to uh, enhance upon it and monetize it. So I do transfer that. So I'll give you an example. few of our agents actually um, then <laughs> believe it or not their main business comes from social media like literally all their businesses come from social media um, and 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 they're great at it and and how to turn those leads into a listing or into a buyer and how to work with them and all of that I have a particular agent I can tell you about 
that uh, when I brought him on board, I changed his mentality a, a little bit. He was doing a lot of leases and I showed him the rope. I said, look, you need to show, associate yourself with a bigger brand, more luxury, more, you know, bigger deals and, and perception is reality. Soon enough, people will realize that you're not just doing leases, you're doing actual transactions and expensive ones. So. I love giving that legs and, and have them uh, go the extra mile. So as soon as I've done that, he has exploded. He's done, I think, about 40 deals this year alone by himself. So, oh, wow. Oh, yeah. He's, he's just exploded. He works hard. Uh, he's relentless. And most of his business, social media, referral business. That's it. That's it. That's it. That's it. So I'm trying to teach him now to become a farmer, pick up a geographical area and all of that stuff. Because you need different fillers of income. You know, uh, you know, if you're all the dinosaur like me, <laughs> we need different fillers of income, different sources needs to come in. You cannot just rely on one source of avenue, right? So I'm trying to teach that to them too. But most of my guys um, are absolutely amazing. Another uh, agent of mine, Matt Rionetti, for example, he's, he's, He's done interview with Jordan Cohen, with Ryan Serhan, with Gary Vee. He's part of the broke agents. Uh, if you look at his videos, he's absolutely amazing. He's, he's, a, he's one of my agents. And he is uh, he just did a two and a half million dollar deal, came from social media. He just bought something for somebody. So, so that's the focus. So if you're standing outside of the box and you understand how to manipulate, um, uh, the way that you want to be in front of as many as people as possible to generate that interest so you can translate those into leads and into transaction at the end of the day. And how, how much time do you think people need to devote to this? Like, you know, per day, how much, how much time is it, does it take to, and, and of course, you know, you're not going to, whatever answer you say, you're not going to like put that time in for a week and all of a sudden get results. Like you, you've got to do it for, you know over, over time but but just you know how much per day do you think it takes to, to get good at this so uh, look, look, in my opinion uh, i personally put a lot of time in my own social media um because uh and i answer every comments you it's it's an engagement matter. you know what i mean you need to you need to engage with people what's the point of being on this app if you just want to post something and see how, look at how pretty this house is. Okay, it's whoopie doo. There's a million, a million of those posts, right? So, but when, when the audience comes to you and engages with you, you need to engage back. So if you look at my posts, I'll, all my comments, I always respond. I, I engage with my audiences in a deeper level. We connect with each other and they send me messages constantly. Like, like how do you do this? How do you do that? So, um, it's very important to put as much as time and effort you can at the beginning to build this, your audience first that are loyal to you. And once that builds, you know, then, then you can perhaps step back or get somebody that's an account manager to manage it for you. But personally, I'm a control freak. So I, and then the, with the exception of me and my wife, nobody can touch our Instagram account because I have a certain way that I like it. So, uh, and, and, uh, and that's it. But if, Somebody wants to go after the, Insta the, the pro, you know, make their Instagram account bigger and monetize it and make money at the end of the day. Put the effort in, guys. It's totally worth it. I, I, I strongly believe. Look at me and you. I got a message from somebody from your team, I believe, and we're, we're now talking on podcasts, right? So, so that, that's, that's the idea. It's, it connects the whole world with each other. Yeah, no, it's, it's definitely... Like I've, I've got people on my team that work on it, but I also probably end up spending like a few hours a day doing, you know, posts, looking at comments, Same here. Go, go, going, you know, doing lives. Like you can't, you can't have other people do your lives. So. <laughs> Same here, my friend, you got to, you have to put the, like any other thing, it's like a, the, you have to put the effort in. So if you want to, if you want to rip the benefit of it, you just have to put the hours in. So I, we do put in hours for it. And I suggested everybody to do the same because it will work. It does work on the proof right here. And so are you. Outside of your brokerage and, and the traditional, you know, real estate, uh, you know, buying and, and selling, you know, homes for people or, or helping them do that, I should say. Uh, 
what other things do you do to, to generate income? So, um, I, so selling, and, uh, that's, that's pretty much it. I don't dabble in building. I don't dabble in, I, I like to do one thing that I'm great at and just keep, you know, keep on doing it. If, um, I don't need to reinvent the wheel. The, the, the wheel is there. Um, but uh, no, I don't dabble in anything else whatsoever. So personally, I don't uh, investment and all of that. Yes, well, we do invest for ourselves in, in in properties, but not in terms of building constructions and all of that. I I think if if somebody that wants to be uh, do too many things at once will never do one thing great. So I personally believe if I wanted to become successful at being the top dog in real estate. Uh, and my concentration is being a top dog in real estate and have the best brokerage I can have for my agents to rip the same benefit that I'm ripping. So that's about it. All right. Well, uh, before we wrap up, I always end with a hyper fast round. If you're ready for some quick questions and answers. Oh, <laughs> okay. No problem. I'll keep it short. All right. What's your biggest piece of advice to a new real estate agent? It's about lead generation. You're not, in, I tell this to all my agents. I said, you're not a real estate agent, guys. You're in lead generation business. <laughs> so they make a mistake. They think they're in real estate business. They're not. They're in lead generation business. So I tell them, I'll tell them, I said, show me how many leads you have in your right now as you're working with. I'll tell you how successful you're going to be in 30 to 60 to 90 days. Okay. And the biggest piece of advice I could tell for a new agent is get out there, talk to people, hear no's, as many as no's as you can hear. Mm. That's my philosophy. It's a good one. Uh, what about for an experienced real estate agent? What's your biggest piece of advice to them right now? I strongly believe uh, for somebody that's been in the business for a long time, uh, pick an area and become the master at it know ins and out of every home, sold, history, all of it, and become the go-to guy in that neighborhood. Become a listed agent. Become that, they pick up the phone and call you and say, come list my house. That's what, that's what you're looking for, right? As a top dogs, usually that's what we want. We want somebody to call us to come and list my house. And so do whatever it takes for a small geographical area. Very all right. Good. What's the biggest... Uh struggle or challenge you've had in real estate and what did you do to overcome it that's easy time <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's easy my friend it's time not having any enough of it you know so um it's it's just time it's, it's just uh, balancing between family work and all of that is extremely important like personally i try to have dinner with my family every day you know what i mean if i have another appointment at night time i try to make it after my dinner hour 9 10 11 i've worked until one o'clock in the morning i don't care but as long as i spend time with the family you know that's a time and balancing acts is 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 the toughest and to me is the uh, toughest challenge all right uh and then this, this may dovetail nicely into this, but uh, when you're not selling real estate, uh, what would we find you doing for fun? I'm on vacation now. <laughs> <laughs> so if I'm not if I'm not selling real estate, probably I'm selling real estate on vacation too, which my wife's testament to that. She always complains, oh, you're on the phone all the constantly, but, but at least you're away spending time with the family. That's what's important, bonding and spending time with my wife and two kids. So that's my thing. All going. right. Last, uh, last one. Where do you see yourself 10 years from now? 10 years from now, I'll be doing the same thing that I'm doing in a larger scale. So um, we will have, we will have multiple offices. Uh, we will have uh, close to about 100 plus agents. And I will be traveling more with my wife, more freedom to do what we wanted to do because hopefully my kids are coming to the business and they're taking over some responsibility and so on and so forth for us to enjoy. The bottom line is in our struggle of every day, all of us want to enjoy life and be happy. That's the bottom line, right? There's nothing else. The mon money allows us to get there. 
<laughs> so, so in my opinion, that would be the freedom that everybody looks for. So more scaled, higher level, but more tooling down in our end. All right. Well, it's been a blast spending time with you today, Peter. Thank you for getting on the show. Yeah. If people want to reach out to you or connect with you or, you know, if they're an agent or if they're looking to buy or sell a home in Toronto, uh, how should they connect with you? So my Instagram handle is at Peter Torkin, my last name, T-O-R-K-A-N. And uh, yeah, they can reach out to me through that and that would be fantastic. So I think that's one avenue that I'm on constantly so they can find me there. All right. If you're listening to this, connect with Peter on Instagram. Thank you for tuning into the show. Please leave us comments, share it with someone that could benefit, and we'll see you next time. Thanks again, Peter. Thank you, buddy. Bye-bye.